Maganda ng umaga sa lahat, po. Kamesta? Putin? Okay, so everybody is my Putin? Okay, that's good. So how have you, how are you, how is the book of uh, First Peter? How is your reading of the book of First Peter? Are you enjoying it? I find it's a very hard book to read, to be honest. Because it's really, you know, how many of you have difficult, difficult employers? Be honest. You all have good employers? How many of you have bad relationship with your spouse? Uh, okay, people, at least now they're being honest. How many have bad relationship with... In your family. Okay? So, in one, how many of you are being persecuted because of your faith? Ah, not yet. We are very blessed. You know, that's why, you know, today's topic actually totally not qualified because I have been blessed. I have, we, have, we are living in Hong Kong, which is, you know, quite free for the moment. And we're not suffering, at least for our faith. Yet, you know, but the Bible tells us that it will come in the last days, right? There will be suffering. And, you know, we have this idea that, you know, when you do bad things, of course you will suffer. But if you're doing good, you're doing things of God, you're supposed to be blessed, aren't you? But here, Peter says, no, you will be blessed. In fact, even Jesus himself said, you will be persecuted. I want to take a look at that, okay? So what happens when you're doing good, when you're doing the work of God, and you're being persecuted? How are we to respond? You know, up to this moment, a little bit background of what's hap- what is in the, why Peter write that book. Actually, this book was written around 64 AD, after Christ, and... Up to that point, you know, Christians have been persecuted, but it's been not a regular thing. It's isolated and all that. But with the fire in Rome, everything changed. Now, there was a big fire in Rome where it destroyed many houses and killed many people. And guess what? It was actually the emperor, Nero himself, who set that fire. In order to shift the blame... He blamed it on the Christians. He says, they are the one who set the fire because they want to rebel against the Roman government. And so it started a systematic, intentional persecution. And when I say persecution, it's not just being thrown in jail. We're talking about martyred. We're talking about execution of Christians. So they have no choice but to flee to leave Jerusalem, leave Rome, and go to, you know, all other parts of the Asia Minor. And it is as they are running for their lives to escape persecution, to escape execution, that Peter is writing this book, this letter to them, to say, hey, things are happening. You're, gonna, you're being persecuted. You're being, but let's, Find out. Let's take a look at why and keep your faith so that you can keep your faith. And beginning with chapter 1 and chapter 2, he started about our relationship, our relationship with God, our relationship with each other, as we have learned last week, right? Especially those who are in authority. We are to honor them, even if they're not good, even if they're unjust. We are to honor them. And... Then, in the beginning of chapter 3, he went on to talk about the relationship between husband and wives. And then he comes to today's passage. Okay, Now, this is the background of why this letter. So, how many of you think that, how many of you feel that being a Christian, meaning that everything is good, is bed of roses, everything will be smooth? You don't think that. Why? Because it isn't, isn't it? In fact, Jesus 
He, pro- he didn't promise us a trouble-free life after we know him. In fact, he said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 9, listen to what he says. Then they would deliver you up to tribulation and put you, oh, thank you, you make it big so I could read it, and put you to death. In fact, you're going to die for your faith, and you will be hate, not just by one person or two person, but you'll be hate by what? All nations, for my name's sake, for the name, for Christ's sake, you will be hated. Wow. Very strong words. And then in John chapter 15, verse 18, it says, if the world hates you, remember that it hates me first. Before it hates you, if you were of the world, the world would love you. So if you do things according to the world, the world will love you because you're one of them, right? We we'll love you as its own, but because you are not of the world. Can you tell the person next to you, I'm not of the world? So Jesus said, but I choose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. They hate you. And in the NILT, New Living Translation, I like this. In verse uh, 21, it says, you know, as, oh, do we have that? Verse 20 to 21? No? Okay. Here it says 20. Do not, remember the word I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute you, they will also, they, if they persecute me, they will also persecute you. So you're not, so Jesus said, I've, they've done it to me, so they will do it to you. Okay, if they kept my word, they will also keep yours. If they listen to me, they will listen to you. But if they hate me, they will hate you. And here in verse 21, do we have that? It says, I'll read the one in, um, I'll read the one in NLT translation because I like this. Since they persecute me naturally. So it's not like maybe they'll do it, but it's naturally they will persecute you. And we've known throughout history that many people have been martyred for their faith. They have been killed, executed. So, but you know, when Jesus said all this, Is it so that we don't want, we're scared, we don't believe him anymore? No. As he says in chapter 16, 1 to 2, it says, I have told you these things. I'm telling you, people are going to hate you. People are going to kill you. They're going to execute you. They are not going to like you. I've told you these things so that, what? You won't abandon your faith. So that you know what's going on. So that you will have, you're prepared. You will not abandon your faith. For you will be expelled from the synagogues. And the time is coming when those who kill you will think they're doing a holy service for God. So actually, people who execute, who persecute the Christians think that they're doing God's work. And we know this because in those, you know, in in the early church, we know that you know, the Jews, they were persecuting the believers thinking that they were a cult. They were thinking that they're doing this for God. Even Saul, who became Apostle Paul, he thought that he was, perse- he was killing them, arresting them for the good of, you know, for the, fa- for the faith. And here it says in verse 20, I have said these things to you that in me, in who? Who is this me he's talking about? Jesus. In Jesus, in me, you may have peace. In the world, you you will have tribulation. But take heart. I, let's read this together. In verse, this is verse 20, uh, verse 33 of chapter 16. But take heart. I have, this is a very famous phrase. I have overcome, what? The world, Christ has victory, right? This is the promise that he will be, there will be trouble. It's going to be hard. 
but he will be with us as long as we stay in him. And guess what? The victory is already won. He has overcome the world. And we know that for a fact. He has overcome the world. Amen? Amen. But it's still so hard, isn't it? It's still so hard. I thought I'm doing good. I thought I'm doing things for you, Lord. Why am I being persecuted? I didn't do anything wrong. Why am I being accused of doing bad things? Right? Why is, why is my employer nonstop screaming and shouting at me? Why? What can I do? It's so hard. You know, this past week I was ministering to two, two, of, two friends and they, both of them have trouble at work. And they both said, oh, it's so hard. He said, and I, one of them actually told me, I might as well just die because I'm worthless. And sometimes we feel like that in, you know, when we're being, pers- when we're being accused, when we're being persecuted unjustly, we feel like, oh, I'm worthless. I can't do anything right. I might as well just die, right? Yet, and into this situation, and I'm sure those you know, believers in those days, they must have felt that way. Why am I, what, am, what is happening? I have to leave home, leave everything I know, you know, and run for my life. And I can't, you know, all around me, people, my friends are being taken to prison. They're being beheaded. They're being chopped in half, right? We know how the, this, the apostles died. They didn't die a very good death. I'm hearing all these bad news. I might as well just die with them. And it's into this situation that Peter wrote this letter to say, hey, things are happening. And, you know, it's bad. It is bad. But guess what? Don't lose hope. Don't lose your faith. And let's look at what today's verse. Let's take a look. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 6. I'm sorry, verse 8. You know, he said all this about relationship, your relationship with God. Remember to hold on to God. He gives you hope. He's the one that gives you hope. And it says, remember to honor all institutions in the world. Remember to honor all people. Honor the emperor. Love your brotherhood. Fear God. And then husbands and wives. Right? Honor each other. Love one another. And then now. First thing he starts with in verse 8 is finally. Finally. After I've said all of that, finally, this is what you must do. All of you. Let's read this together. Have what? Have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Finally, I've said all those things. So all of you. This is what it means. It means to have a unity of mind. Remember Christ. Right? Have, be sympathetic. Love one another. Brotherly love. Love one another. Have a tender heart. Don't harden your heart just because of hardship. And don't be proud. Stay humble. We need Christ. And guess what? He said, do not repay evil for evil or revealing for revealing. But on the contrary, what are you to do? Bless. Let's say it louder. What are you to do? Bless. For to this you were called that you may obtain a blessing. What are you called? You're called to bless. You're called not to say, not to fight back. You're called not to Argue. Your call not to repay evil, you know, evil for good. No, good for evil. Sorry. Right? Am I? You know, right? Yeah. You're not to evil for evil. Just because the other, per, just because you're being, you know, scold. Just because you're being yelled at. You're being, you know, shamed sometimes. Right? Or you're being. You know, you're being put down. He said, don't argue back. Don't repay evil for evil. But guess what? what is, how do we 
come out of this situation, we come out of this situation guarding our tongue. Making sure that you're not speaking evil. You're not speaking bad words. But guess what? You do your blessing. Remember Jesus said you have to pray and bless your enemy? Pray for them. Bless them. Bless God. And guess what? It is what you know what? God says this is what you're called for. This is what you're called to do as a believer. Oh, but you don't know how bad. Hey, it doesn't matter, Peter says. Remember God. Remember you. First thing is remember your relationship with God. That's what he spent chapter 1 talking about. Right? And honor those who are, those who are above you. And remember to bless. Let encouraging word, loving word come out of your mouth. Your action. So that, what is the promise? The promise is that so may, so you may obtain a blessing. And this blessing is even better than what you can give. Because this blessing comes from God. Right? So you are to bless. Because when we are being, you know, when something happens to us, there's three ways that we can respond. We can respond with evil for good. You know, somebody do something for you, nice, but then I don't like it. Evil for good. Or evil for evil. This is most likely the, the response we'll have. Like you, ah, oh, you're mean to me, I'm going to be mean to you. Right? How oh, you scold me, oh, I'm going to do something, I'm going I'm to fight back. You said something un unkind, I'm going to argue with you. Right? This is your normal response. Or... What is Peter saying? Respond good for evil. Don't we pay evil with evil, but we pay good for evil. Bless. Why? Because we're called to bring peace. We're called to be the light on top of the world. We are called to glorify God in everything that we say and do. And how do you glorify God? No, nah, 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 nah. no, you glorify God by saying, God, forgive them. Remember Christ, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Right? Because Israel, remember this, Israel is, call, is set a call to be set apart, to be an example for the other nations. You as a follower of Christ, as child of God, you are set apart to be an example for the people around you. How many times, let's be honest, before you were a Christian, how many times have you seen the behaviors of so-called Christians and say, wow, wow, Doris is a Christian, are you sure? I heard her yelling. You know, talking about, you know, talking behind her employer's back. Are you sure, Irene? I just saw her fighting with Revlin. Hmm. People watch us. We can, we can, you know, and the way we behave, that's why Peter spent time talking about our relationship with God. How's your relationship with God? Have you been studying the Bible? Have you been reading his word? Putting his word to heart? Have you been praying? Now that your relationship with God is right, I hope, how's your relationship with other people? Do you love one another? Are you honoring those people, you know, who have authority over you or around you? Are you respecting them? How is it? How are you doing? And you know what? It's easy to be suffering when, you know, when you did something wrong. It's easy to be scolded when you did something wrong, right? But it's very, very hard when you're doing right. Everything is right. Hey, I've cleaned the house. You know, you could put your finger under the table and you couldn't find dust, right? And then your employer comes, hey, 
the house is so dirty, and you're like, what did I do? It's hard. It's hard to keep hold your tongue. It's hard to hold your temper. But Peter says, remember God. Ayo. <laughs> hey, bless. Let those words that come out of your mouth, your thoughts be a blessing. Oui, not easy. First Peter is not an easy book, I tell you. Okay, let's continue. And in chapter 3, verse 10. To 12, it says, for whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue, so our tongue, from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes, what? Let's read this together. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. He's watching. He is watching. And his ears are open to their prayers. God knows. He hears. That's why you need to talk to him. That's why you need to pray. Remember new life. The, le- the course we talk. The second thing you have, to, you have to pray. You have to talk to him. But the face of the Lord is against those uh-oh, who do evil. So what are we to do if we call, we're going to call ourselves Christians, we have to do good. Even in the face of evil, in the face of hardship. You know, what's a, so blessing. Hard thing to do, right? Blessing. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Here it says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. So you are blessed. For theirs is what? Let's read this together. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So there is a reward for you. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed in verse 11. Blessed are you when others, right? Revere you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. So when they persecute you, when they, you know, say bad things about you on the, on, on, because of Christ, what are you to do? You are to, verse, 13, uh, verse 12, you are to rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. Can you say rejoice and be glad? glad. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil is afraid when we do good. If you have an uneventful Christian life, then I'm sorry. You're not, you're not being, you're not being an influencer. You're not changing the world. You know, you're not doing well. As a, as a believer of God, when, when you're doing well, when you're going all out, when you're going to evangelize, telling people about Christ, when you're working, doing good things for God, you know, guess what? The enemy don't like it. It will come. It will, dis, it will come to distract you. It will come to scare you. Instead of saying, oh my God, why, why? It's like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Finally, I'm doing something good for you, God. Rejoice and be glad because your reward is where? It's in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who were before you. You know, like Stephen. Remember him in Acts chapter 7? His suffering didn't end well. Did it? But it was his faith. Listen to this. It was his faith in the face of death that impact the kingdom of God. How many of us read his story? How many of, you know the people who were were persecuting him, who were throwing stones at him, how many lives were touched because his unwavering faith in God? And there was one we know who changed the course of history, Paul. He was one of the ones who flew the stones at Stephen. 
And look what happened. He encountered God. He encountered Jesus, and his life turned around. And we are here today because he was called to minister to the Gentiles. Amen. And what did he do before his death? Acts. This is not on the screen. Acts chapter seven verse sixty. As he was being stoned, he said, "Lord, do not hold this sin against them." And when he had said this. This is about Stephen. He fell asleep. He died while forgiving, while blessing his persecutors. This is an example for us to learn. How can he bless? Because he knows the will of God. He knows that he needs to tell others about God. Remember this. You know the story. In the beginning, he was telling them the whole history of. The Jews, right, telling them what happened when God in the beginning and God creating and the Red Sea and God delivering them out of Egypt and everything in between, and then Jesus coming, saving them. He was living out the will of God in his life. And how can we bless? We bless because we are we know that we are living not out of the will of man, but out of will for God. Amen. And this is in verse. Thirteen to seventeen in First Peter chapter three. Now, who is there to harm you, if you are zealous for what is good? If you're doing what is good, good for what? Good for God, right? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear. So don't. Things are going to happen, but don't be afraid. All be troubled, right? Verse fifteen. Let's read this together. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Amen. And verse. Uh, is it sixteen and seventeen? Having a good conscience, so that you know that you're doing good, so that when you are slander, when you're being told lies at those who reveal your good behavior in Christ, may be put to shame. Because as they're saying, oh, she's no, she's a liar. She's a she didn't do well. She didn't clean, you know, properly. She's always lazy. But because by your good behavior, people will know that they're lying. They will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Doing good, God's will, and then in chapter four, verse two, for so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh. Because we're still living in this world, right, in the flesh. But he said, "What? No longer for human passions, but for the will of God." Because even Jesus Himself, He lived for the will of God. Remember, in the Garden of Gethsemane, He was saying, "God, Father, if You're willing, take this cup from me." He doesn't. He knows that it's hard. He, you know, yet he said, "Yet not my will, not what I want, but yours be done. Do your will." And this is the most challenging that we have to do as a believer is to submit to the will of God. How many of you are willing to submit to the will of God? Amen. Don't just say "Amen." I'm going to ask. I'm going to call you out at the end. Huh? You guys better be. It's not easy. Remember this, okay? Remember the three friends of Daniel in Daniel chapter three, verse sixteen and eighteen, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had to because King Nebuchadnezzar make a gold statue and said everyone must bow to it. Okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but then they didn't. So if you don't, you have to be you have to be put to death. Flung in the fire furnace, and they—you know what they said? They're willing to do it. Said, "Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, 
we do not need to defend ourselves before you. Okay? If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. Look at their faith. My God is going to save me. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. Wow, such faith. God is going to rescue them. Of, so, of course, no fear. Go, right? But look at what they say next. But, in verse 18, but, even if, can you say, but, even if? He doesn't. Even if we died, he doesn't save us. We want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your God or worship the golden statue you have put up. And we know the rest of the story. They came out. They, when they were thrown in the furnace, people outside saw four people in there. Right? And the fourth one was Christ. And when, he came, when they came out, unscathed, even Nebuchadnezzar said, this, your God is great. This is the happy story. But guess what they say? Even if he doesn't. How many of us can say, wow, well, my God, you know, Wow, I have cancer? Oh my God's going to heal me. He will heal me. How many of you can say, but even if he doesn't, I'm still going to trust God? Amen. See, it's your attitude. People don't understand why we can do this. I've had, I've, I don't have time, but I have so many testimonies of people, friends. You know, they have, they're going through Bad situations. We've been praying, we've been praying. And he says, you know, God is going to help. But even if he doesn't, if nothing changes, I'm still going to trust God. And why can we trust God? Why can they have such faith? Even if he doesn't, I will trust God. I'm not going to do what man wants me to do. I will do what God wants me to do. Because they are living in the will of God. Because they are following the example of Christ. Christ said, God, if you could take this cup away from me, but not my will, your will be done. God didn't take that cup away from him. He had to go to the cross. He has to suffer. He was beaten. He was you know, make fun of. People, the soldiers were throwing dice to divide his clothes right in front of him. Yet, he willingly went because he knows the will of the Father and is willing to submit to the will of the Father. Even if you don't take this cup away from me, I will do your will, not my will. Are you willing to say that? First Peter chapter 3, let's continue. 19 to 22. For Christ's example, in which he went and proclaimed in the spirit in prison, to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey. When God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared. So he's talking about you know, Noah's days, right? In which a few, that is eight person, were brought safely flew water in baptism. Safely flew water baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. They have been baptized, cleansed of their sins, and turn, saying that they've turned their life around and follow God, not as a removal of dirt from the body, not the baptism did not save them, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities and powers having been subjected to him. So here is talking about, you know, the days of Noah where they went through the, the flood and he's talking about the baptism, you know, talking about the with that these uh, believers, they went through the water baptism in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they were saved through the cleansing of their sins. But it's not the baptism that saves them. It was because of Christ. 
Okay. Because remember we learned this. Those, you know, uh, past, by past, who, went to the, who went to the lesson with Pastor Ed. Baptism is an outward expression of our personal it's a public, a per, private and personal and a public declaration of our faith in Christ, right? Being saved by God. So, okay. So the victory belongs to who? To Christ. To Christ. And we are, now that we are following Christ, we are subjected. Right? He said it. You have to follow my son. They hate you. They're going to hate me. If they hate me, they're going to hate you. So we have to follow his example. If we're going to do the will of God, people will hate us. And we can, but we can follow Christ because 1 Peter, see Peter didn't just leave us with all this. You know, where is he going with this? He is saying in chapter 4 verse 6, for this is why the gospel was preached even to those who are dead, that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live where? In the spirit, the way God does. So we have what? Hope the eternity in mind. Live with eternity in mind. Okay. And then continue in chapter, in, sorry, verse 7. It says the end of all things is at hand. I want to tell you, the end is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober mind for the sake of your prayers. Above all, let's read this together. Keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. So love one another earnestly, without fail. So that because this is the end times, and to show hospitality, to everyone. Because loving one another is not just with your mouth, your lips, with your actions. Love is an, is an action, it's in James, right? Faith without works is dead. So we have to love one another with our action. Showing hospitality to one another without grumbling. How can we do this? We do this because we know where's our end goal. It's in heaven. Eternity with God. You know, I want to tell you this. The, this walk, our Christian life, is not going to be easy. And we're very blessed. We live in a place in Hong Kong where there is no persecution. But we can never be sure. It may come. Are we prepared for it? Are you following Christ's example? Are you living the will, in the will of God? Are you willing to say, you know, my God is going to save me, but even if he doesn't, I will still follow him. Let's all stand. You know, I'm going to call, if this is, you know, you, you want to recommit, you say, God, yeah, I've, I followed you, but I, I've, Wandered away. I, I want my the older team to come. I want to recommit my life to you today. If that is you, I want you to come out. Say, God, yeah, I'm gonna recommit my life to you. I I want to I want to live in your will. I want to follow your example. <laughs>